Hey, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for joining. Today I'm going to talk about bi-directional home EV chargers. And although there are advantages to these, there are also some disadvantages, which uh, not too many people are talking about. So I just wanted to discuss that as well. Now, home charging stations for EVs uh, come in a couple of different types. And actually, I think a couple of different types now with bi-directional charging coming on in the near future. Uh, you, can, you can come home and you can, you can basically plug your EV into the wall, e either into a level one charger, which is just like, you know, 110 volts, your regular, your regular outlets, or level two charging, which is 240 volts, similar to, you know, your, if you have an electric dryer, that, that kind of charging. And there are smart chargers as well that allow you to plug your charger, your, your EV charger into your car and then it doesn't necessarily start charging immediately. You can actually, again, it's, it's called a smart charger. And as they say, with smart charging, cars can be plugged in, but they don't have to actually be charging the whole time. Individual EV owners or energy companies can decide when it's most efficient to charge energy in terms of demand and cost. Now, this to me is a little troubling because as, as there are, you know, many, many pressures on the grid, especially in states like California, energy companies may at some point in the future determine when and when, when you can and can't charge your EV, even if you need it done, such as uh, smart thermostats in Colorado in the, in the past couple months when there were heat waves and there was pressure on the grid, they set individual homes to 78 degrees and, and wouldn't allow homeowners to set their thermostat with their air conditioning below 78 degrees. This could also happen with smart chargers in homes for electric vehicles. So this is a little troubling to me. Now, bi-directional charging is something that goes the next step. And again, in some ways there are advantages, but in some ways there could be disadvantages. Two-way bi-directional charging lets power flow from the car's battery back into the home or the power grid. That's, that's the bi-directional aspect of it. Instead of just plugging in and powering your vehicle, you could also, in times of need, have that energy go back into your home or back into the power grid. Now, right now, there are only a couple of different cars that offer that ability. The Nissan Leaf is one. And also the Ford F-150 Lightning truck is another. And I don't think the, the F-150 Lightning allows it quite yet, but it has the capability and it will in the future. Now, the advantage of having an EV such as a Nissan Leaf or even a Ford F-150 uh, power your house or be backup for power in times of need is this. Um, you may have heard that Tesla has what's called the Tesla Powerwall that's specifically made for homes, and it's usually used in conjunction with solar panels on your home. The, the, power, the Tesla Powerwall has 13.5 kilowatt hours of, of battery capacity. A Nissan Leaf, on the other hand, has 40 kilowatts and 60 kilowatts, depending on which battery in the new Nissan Leafs you buy. So again, 13 0.5 kilowatt hours compared to 40 or 60 kilowatt hours. So the Nissan Leaf has a, a much greater capacity to, to power your home if you need it. The Ford F-150 Lightning, on the other hand, has 98 kilowatt hours with their standard battery, and their extended battery has 131 kilowatt hours of battery capacity. So it's the, the high capacity for Lightning, Ford F-150 Lightning battery has 10 times the capacity of the Tesla Powerwall, which is made for homes. So let's get back to the bi-directional charging. It would allow you to possibly power your house in times of, of need. But the problem is, and this is what's a little scary, is, is the attitude of a lot of folks that are advocating for bi-directional charging and with for EVs. Here's, here's an example. Today, there are too few bi-directional EV chargers installed to help ease the strain on California's grid for the current heat wave. But bi-directional chargers let EVs help keep the lights on 
and the air condition is humming through future weather events if the potential benefits are made clear to consumers when they are buying their first home EV charging stations. So in other words, they seem to me be more depending on folks who buy electric vehicles rather than increasing the capacity of the grid in California, which they haven't been doing. As a matter of fact, in California, they've really been doing the opposite. Instead of, instead of you know, bringing more power stations online, for example, natural gas power stations, or even going to nuclear power, they're closing those down. They're closing down fossil fuel power, power plants and more going towards solar panels and wind farms. And that is reducing the capacity in California. So it seems to me that they're, they're more going towards, depending on people to buy electric vehicles, plug them into the wall with bi-directional charging, and then depending on consumers to keep the grid going. Here's another article that I read, and I'm, I'm quoting from this article. Cars are no longer just modes of transportation. They are increasingly integrated into the larger energy infrastructure. If your EV is sitting in your garage fully charged, and cars are typically parked 95% of the time, they say, and you lose power, that big battery offers an opportunity to keep the lights on. And when there's a sudden spike in demand for the grid, because everybody wants to turn their AC on during a heat wave or their heat during a deep freeze, utilities could then depend on on your vehicles. This is known as bi-directional or vehicle-to-grid charging, and it's one of the legitimate game changers, uh, says the one of the commissioners of the California Public Utilities Commission. If all the EVs in the state plug in during these peak load times and feed power back to the grid, they're acting as giant batteries. We could use them greatly and relieve stress on the grid during periods of greatest need. So again, they're acting as though they own your car batteries and that they can tap into them anytime. I'm afraid in the future they may actually require this. And one of the negatives, in addition to the fact that, you know, you should be able to own your vehicle and decide what you do with it, is the fact that if your vehicle is parked and, and plugged into a bi-directional, uh, bi-directional power station in your home, and that battery is charging and discharging, that's going to reduce the battery life in your car. Because the batteries in your car, just as the batteries in your cell phone, they, they are deter- their battery life, their, the life of the battery, is determined on how many times you charge and discharge that battery. So if your car va- battery, your EV car battery, is constantly plugged into a bi-directional charger, and it's constantly being charged and discharged, depending on the needs of the grid, well, that's going to greatly reduce the life of your car battery. And as you've probably all seen in the news, battery, batteries in vehicles are very, very expensive to replace, almost prohibitively so, so that it's almost cheaper to just buy a new vehicle. Very, very expensive. Hopefully, those costs will come down in the future, but as for right now, they're very expensive. Here's another article where they say, uh, that that moving from one-way power flow into homes, really having bi-directional power flow back is very, very important. Similarly, automakers, charging companies, and utilities need to work together to make use of EV batteries sitting in garages, as though they own the batteries sitting in your garage. Again, it's a little troubling. So how would this work for the customer? A utility might ask EV owners to make their batteries available during extreme heat events. For example, the customer who's participating knows their vehicle might be called to provide power, says a senior vehicle analyst for the Clean Transportation Program at the Union of Concerned Scientists, giving customers a head up, a heads up that it might happen. Even if it's just a day ahead, that can be super helpful. Again, The attitude is that they own your EV, and again, not only will you be dependent on the grid, the grid is going to be more dependent on you. I'm a little troubled by this. So here in the United States, they have started some pilot programs where they're experimenting with with more on an industrial scale, the vehicle-to-grid power, and this is a good use for it. 
in San Diego, they have a fleet of, of electric buses. And the electric buses have huge batteries. And in the morning, they drive the kids to school, and then they get parked for, for the rest of the day until the, the later, you know, later in the afternoon when they go to pick up the kids. And because this is owned by the municipality, this would be a good use for, for the school buses when they're not being used. They can come in, they can plug to a bi-directional charger, and then that, that power can go back into the grid. Again, it's owned by, by the municipalities, and there are also some companies that have, you know, maybe they'll have some, some, some short-distance trucks that are electric that they can also keep plugged into bi-directional chargers. That's fine, and we'll see how that works. But again, I'm just, I'm just a little leery of, of the, you know, maybe future requirements that you're, that you're going to be mandated to plug into bi-directional chargers with electric cars in the future. So not only, again, would you be dependent on the grid, but the grid would be dependent on you, and that may make it mandatory. So bottom line, um, it would be great if you had an electric car and you know, you could use that as kind of like a backup generator, really more backup batteries, so that if there were power outages, you could, you could connect your vehicle to the home and you could power your, power your home. As a matter of fact, as I mentioned, the, the Ford F-150 Lightning truck has huge batteries, and you could probably keep your power on in your home by using an F-150 Lightning battery for about three days. But again, um, I, I just don't like the idea of, of this this possibly in the future being mandated and, and again it's it it's it hopefully it'll never happen but again just something to consider that you know they they may be mandating that you plug into the grid in the future to keep the grid stabilized rather than increasing the capacity of the grid which is what they should be doing bringing more power plants online rather than shutting down fossil fuel power plants so that's it. Uh, again, I just wanted to wrap this up by saying I'm not against electric vehicles. I'm against mandated electric vehicles. But it just seems that, you know, e instead of having an option to buy electric vehicles in the future, they are mandating it. They are, you know, California, for example, has banned gasoline vehicles after the year 2035. They've also uh, made mandatory, and not not the voters, not even the legislators, the California Air Resources Board, unelected bureaucrats, have mandated that starting in 2030, new homes must be all electric. You will no longer be able to buy or replace a natural gas-powered furnace after 2030 in California or a gas water heater. You'll have to go all electric, putting more pressure on the grid. And again, with more pressure on the grid and not really a lot more capacity come on coming online in California, I'm afraid they're going to make other things mandatory, such as bi-directional charging. It's, you know, you don't hear this anywhere else on the internet. I don't, I don't see editorials about this possibility. So that's why I just wanted to, you know, bring it forward as food for thought, something to consider. Thanks again for joining my, my podcast today. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, and hit the like, the like button as well. It helps. We'll see you next time. Take care.